I'm Jess Lenore with the Real News Network. We're here in Philadelphia on day two of the Democratic National Convention. We're here with a Green Party Senate candidate from Colorado. Um, tell us your name and why you're running for Senate from, from Colorado on the Green Party ticket. And you are on the ballot and you've been endorsed by Cornell West. Yes, my name's Arn Menconi. I'm running for U.S. Senate in the state of Colorado. I was a two-term Eagle County Commissioner from 2001-2009. I ran a national charity for disadvantaged youth and I ran a small business. So I've done all three sectors of, of, of society, for-profit, non-profit, and government. But I'm sick and tired of endless wars, all right? I went out to Washington, D.C., met up and started training with Code Pink, got arrested in a Senate hearing with John Kerry to try to stop endless wars. That's the number one reason I'm running. Number two is to stop global warming. Number three is the acceleration of the inequality gap. And number four is racial injustice. The global corporate mafia, as Chris Hedges calls it, runs our government. This is a corporate totalitarian state. And I want to run against my incumbent, Michael Bennett, who I campaigned who's for. Who's a Democrat. Who's a Democrat. And, and Colorado's a swing state. Yes. And it only needs about 600,000 votes to win Colorado. This is a very and doable. And so t talk, about, talk about the issues with the incumbent. Why well, is he? Yeah. He takes all of his money from all the usual suspects. 80% of his money is coming from outside of the state. He's getting money from all of the uh, uh, all of Wall Street lobbyists. He takes money from DeVito, which is a healthcare industry that was indicted for Medicaid fraud. He voted for fast tracks leading up to TPP. He won't come out against it yet. He put his support behind the Iran deal the day be the Friday before Labor Day. He supported the Keystone Pipeline. You know, I was a Democrat who Governor Ritter asked me to campaign for Michael Bennett. I know Michael Bennett. I've been in Washington for 20 years. These guys are sold out. They are out of touch with the people of Colorado. Now, the argument I'm sure you have heard yes. countless times, isn't Donald Trump worse? Wouldn't the Republican be worse? If, if you take votes away from the Democrats, aren't you just going to pave the way for a right-wing Republican to take control? who's not even going to address climate change, who knows what his actual foreign policy would be. We could have more wars under Donald Trump than not under Hillary Clinton. No one really knows. Yeah, well, this is the lesser of two evil argument. And as Jill Stein said, stop talking about the lesser of two evils and stop talking about fighting for the greater good. It's a four-way race, by the way, in Colorado. You have a libertarian candidate. The Republican candidate is a county commissioner, just like I was. And then you have Michael Bennett. So I think, you know, this is going to be very interesting who takes things away. I would like Michael Bennett to step out of the race and not be a spoiler for me to win. And this could be a potentially um, huge year in Colorado come November because you have the single payer um, health care option, right. um, you know, on, on the ballot, which yes. would be the first state to, to have something like that. Yes. Um, he's already one of the first states to legalize, fully legalize marijuana. Um, so it, you've there is a yeah. potential for progressive change in Colorado. Yeah, I mean, people don't really understand how interesting politically is Colorado. It's no longer, uh, you know, a, you can't even call it a purple state because one and a, one and a half million people are registered on affiliate, number one registration. Then 1.2 million are Republican, 1.1 million are Democrat. In the, in the unaffiliate, it grew by almost 25% uh, since 08 and 50% of the voters are under 40. All right. Yet 75 percent of the people vote for the legalization of marijuana. You pointed out Amendment 69, which Michael Bennett is not for, universal health care. An anti-fracking referendum looks like it's going to be on the ballot. And a $12 an hour minimum wage looks like it's going to be on the ballot. Now, what are you doing to appeal to the Bernie, Bernie or bus crowd right now? Because there's a we talked to people in Cleveland and Philadelphia. There's a lot of people. Um, even in the party, even delegates who right. are absolutely beyond frustration with how the party Oh, I feel has that frustration. Look, I sat with uh, his communication director in March of 2015, said, I'll be your field guy in Colorado. I gave $100 back then, and I've been preaching his message. And when, you know, this is what I'm hearing and what I'm thinking is what Chris had just said back in September of 2014. My... Uh, he is going to have to roll up into the Democratic Party. He cares about managing his seat. 
with the Democrats in the Senate. But for two, he raised $250 million of individuals' money in order to create a political campaign. A political campaign is not a blue ribbon commission, not a process. It has to start now and happen before November 8th. And some people have criticized Bernie Sanders for not continuing his campaign and, yeah. and focusing and on, on down ticket candidates. Can you yeah. talk about I, I'm definitely one of those people. I mean, look, Bernie has stood on the shoulders of Occupy Wall Street. He stood on the shoulders of Black Lives Matters. I've been in six Black Lives Matters. He's been si he was silent on, on, the, on the, the police killings that happened right before he well, was. He's been he silent on what's going on in, in foreign wars. He hasn't spoken out against the drone attacks. He, he's, he, he was historic in what he said about the occupation of Palestine. That was brilliant that he did that. But let's face it, folks. I mean, these people are trying to figure out how they can manage the power and they're trying to look at what they can still maintain. We have to do a revolution because of the global warming. I have a nine and I have a 10 and 11 year old. What am I supposed to tell them 20 years from now about this election? I was a, I grew up on the south side of Chicago in 1968 and those guys were beaten up by the daily machine because of a war. Now the war is endless. Now the war is not taking you and me into it, what they're doing is they're taking our budget and they're spending it all on endless wars. All right, thanks so much for joining us. We Thank appreciate you. it. Peace. Thank you for joining us at The Real